hello guys welcome back to another android volley tutorial today we are going to learn about how to send data to a remote server from your android application using volley so here i use a local host here i use a vamp server application so i have to start vamp server and here the green icon indicates that now vamp server is running fine now open your browser we have to open the home page of ARM server. So on the address bar, type localhost. Uh, go to PHP my admin. Okay, here we have a database called the user DB, and that database contain a table called the user info. And here is the structure of the table. The table contain two columns: name and email. Now we are going to create an Android application that add information to this database for these two columns name and email. So the first thing we have to put some need.php script on the web server. So go to the installation folder of this web server. Uh, go to the installation folder of AMP server. Go to the root directory. Uh, here we have a PHP script with file name update info.php. So here we declare some variables like user, password, host name and database name. Here we have username, password, host name and database name. And here is the data from the Android application. Here we use the HTTP POST method. So here we get the data from the Android application using this POST method with key name and email. And we save the information from Android application in this variable username and user password. Now we are going to add this information to the table. So here is the SQL. So first we have to connect to the database. Here we use a function called MySQLI connect. And you have to pass parameters like host, username, and database name. And we save the connection in this variable called the CON. Now here is the SQL statement to insert data into the table. Here we have to insert information from these two variables, username and user pass. Okay. And finally, we execute the SQL statement using this function called MySQLI query. You have to pass two parameter connection and the SQL statement. And if it is written true, data insertion success, otherwise data insertion failed. And finally, we close the MySQL connection. So this is the PHP script that we are going to use. So now the server and database is ready. Now open Android Studio and create a new Android Studio project and specify a project name. Here I name it as Data Insertion App. Uh, data Insertion App. Now click Next. Now select an empty activity. Click Next. Click Next. So here the project is created. So the first thing you need to add the needed permissions inside Android Manifesto.xml. So open Android Manifesto.xml. Here we need the internet permission. So add the internet permission. Okay. Now here we use the Voli library to send the data to the server. So you need to add the needed dependency for using Voli. So open your Gradle script file and add the needed permission. Now add the needed permission. So now make a project sync. Okay, now the project sync finishes. Uh, now we can create the GUI of the application. Okay, here I add two edit text for insert name and email and there is a button also. So this is the edit text for insert name with ID name and this is the edit text for adding email with ID email and here is a button with ID PN. Okay, now go to main, here is the layout. 
and now go to main activity dot java up here you need to create some variables uh, first create a variable for button and now create variables for edit text name and email and now we can initialize these variables first initialize the button variable first typecast that one into button now find it find the view by id method r dot id dot bn now initialize the edit text variable first one name first typecast that one into edit text now find it r dot id dot name now email Now find it r dot id dot email. Okay. Uh, now create a click listener for the button. So button dot set on click listener. Okay, so when user click the button, we have to send the information to the, the remote database. So create some string variables here. Final string, a name and email. Uh, now fetch information from the GUI. So name equal to text to view edit text name dot get to text dot to string. And uh, now get the email. Email equal to email dot get your text dot to string okay now this we save the information within these two variables name and email now we can send this one to the remote server so here we need to declare some more variables here I use a local host here our PHP file name is update info dot PHP and here I'm going to use Genymotion virtual device so I have to identify the IP address of this computer so IP config on your command prompt and here is the IPv4 address so now specify the URL create a variable called a string server URL HTTP colon now specify the IPv4 address uh, here the address is 253.2 and uh, now specify the PHP file name the file name is update info.php okay so here we have to display some alert dialog so initialize a variable for that one also alert dialog builder and now we need to initialize the alert dialog builder variable builder equal to new alert dialog builder pass the context main activity dot this okay now we can create a string request so create a string request I name it as a string request equal to new string request the first parameter is the request method here we use the post request method so request.method.post and now specify the server URL here the URL is available on this variable called the server URL now specify the response listener Now specify an error listener. Okay, and now we have the response listener and error listener. So here we have to send some data to the server within this string request. So we have to override some other method called get params. 
So here I'm going to override one more method called get params. Uh, this method has a map return type. So this will return some string value pair in the form of a hash map. So here uh, we have to create a hash map variable. So create a variable map. Now specify the type of key value. Here both are strings. Now specify the variable name. I name it as params equal to new hash map. Okay, now we can put information to the map. So params dot put. First you have to specify the key, then you have to specify the value. So here the key is name. So we can check the PHP script. Uh, here the keys are name and email. You have to use the same key name. Okay, now specify the value. Here the value available on this variable called the name. Uh, now specify the second data. Params output. Now specify the key, email. Uh, now specify the data. It is available on this variable called the email. And finally, uh, we have to return params. We have to return that hash map. Okay. Now we can handle the response. We get the server response on this method called on response. So here I'm going to show you an alert dialog. So we have to initialize the builder parameter. So builder dot set title. Uh, the title is server response. Now set a message on the alert dialog. So builder dot set message uh, response. Now display the response. Okay. Now specify a positive button for the alert dialog. Set positive button. Okay. Now specify the on click listener for the button. So when user click the button on the alert dialog, we have to clear the email and name edit text. So name dot set the text. First clear the name edit text field. Uh, now clear the email edit text field. Okay. Now we can create an alert dialog. So create a variable for alert dialog equal to builder dot create. Now we need to show the alert dialog. So alert dialog dot show. Okay. So now the string request is ready. Now we can add this one to the request queue. So here I am going to use a singleton class. So create a new class. Specify the class name as my singleton. So here uh, we have to create some variables private, private static, my singleton. I name it as m instance. Now create some variables for request queue. Private uh, request queue. I name it as a request queue. Uh, now create a context variable private static context. I name it as context mctx. Okay. Now here I am going to create a method that return a request queue. So public request queue. And the method name is get the request queue. So first check some condition. If the request queue variable is null or not. If request queue is null, we have to initialize the request queue. So request queue equal to volley dot new request queue and pass the context m context dot get application context. And finally return the request queue. Okay. Now here we need a constructor for this class. So private my singleton. And for this constructor, we need one parameter. It is a context variable. So first, I'm going to initialize the context variable. 
now initialize the request queue and call the method get request queue okay and now I am going to create a method that return an instance of this class so public static is a synchronized method and the return type is my singleton and method name is get instance uh, for this method we need two arguments we need one argument a context now here check some condition if m instance equal to null in that case we have to initialize that variable so m instance equal to new my singleton and pass the parameter context and finally we can return m instance okay and now I'm going to create a method for adding the request to the request queue so create a method public void add it to request queue add it to request queue and for this method only one argument uh, that is a request so request okay now we need to add the request to the request queue so request queue dot add and pass the request okay so now the singleton class is ready now go to main activity dot java now we can add the request string request to the request queue so my singleton my singleton dot get instance pass the context main activity dot this now add a request queue and pass the request queue string request okay now if there is an error happens we can display a toast from the on error response method main activity dot this now specify the error message error now make it short now finally make the toast visible using show method okay now print the stack trace of the error so error dot print stack trace okay now we finish the coding now we can test it so now run the application and select a virtual device Okay, now the application available on this virtual device so before going to add the data here is our database and now currently there is no information available on the table now we are going to add some information so here I'm going to add some name and email put some name and now add some email okay now submit the data uh, this is the response from server the response is data insertion is success okay so now we can check the table so refresh the database here is the data inserted from the Android application okay so now I'm going to add another data so add a name and now add some email address and now submit that data here also data insertion is success now refresh the database here is the newly added data so this is how we insert data to a remote server from your Android application using Voli I hope you understand the concepts. Thank you for watching. See you in the next episode.